Hello, everybody, and welcome here to the Wine with Jimmy channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. Now, this is a wine channel which is giving you all the information you need to help you understand and enjoy wine to a greater level. So here we have a WSET Level 3 series, and we're looking at red and pink winemaking in this series. So we're going to go through, first of all, crushed fruit fermentation, some traditional foot treading you'll see there in play. So yes, we break this section of the textbook into four series. So we're talking about red and pink winemaking for the first three series will be about red winemaking techniques. Uh, so through crushed fruit fermentations in this first series, then whole bunch fermentations, then maturation and blending, and then pink winemaking techniques. Uh, now, this is the series on crushed fruit fermentations. So it's a three-parter. This first video is available as free content, but parts two and three will only be available for those of you who subscribe to my e learning portal. So please search for Wine with Jimmy e-learning or you can go to winewithjimmy.com to get all the information you need in order to subscribe. Now the exclusive content which is available for those of you studying your level three, there are wonderful volumes of exclusive videos, flashcards, mock questions, walkthrough questions, maps. There's so much. It's a huge section now designed to really give you the confidence to get through your examination. So we're talking about all things crushed fruit fermentation. Now, the vast majority of fruit used in red wine making is de-stemmed and crushed. Therefore, the techniques I'll go through uh, to begin with in this series is all about that, that type of processing. We will go through whole bunch and whole bunch and crushed fruit combined, carbonic, semi-carbonic in the next series. So a little bit around de-stemming and crushing to begin with. Now, these are, of course, optional processes. Now, machine harvested grapes will arrive without stems. And even if the grapes have been hand harvested, most winemakers will choose to remove them. This is usually done in a machine that can subsequently crush the grapes as well. So we call it a de-stemmer and crusher. Now, crushing breaks the skins of the grapes and it liberates a small quantity of juice known as the free run juice, uh, but it should avoid damaging the seeds. If the seeds are crushed, they will release bitter oils and tannin and the, the wine actually might taste pretty unpleasant, very astringent. Now, these are wonderful devices, a manual destemmer crusher you and, and same with the actually mechanical ones on you set the gap so there is a gap that you can set the grapes will be fed through this gap so if you close it down more there'll be more vigorous crushing of the grapes if you open the gap a little bit some berries will actually get through uncrushed it's not a bad thing this may be desired if you want whole berries i'll actually talk a little bit more about this on the next series so there is flexibility that can happen here but it certainly is liberating free run juice for the most part when we de-stem and we crush at the same time. Now, once the fruit has been crushed, some winemakers prefer to leave the grapes, uh, so everything, so that's the skins and the juice, to macerate for a period of time at a low temperature before allowing fermentation to start. So typically, we are talking about temperatures below 10 degrees Celsius, somewhere around sort of two to five, but maybe two to eight dependent. Basically, we want this lower than the threshold for yeast to begin fermentation. OK, and of course, you need the equipment to do this and you need to be willing to spend on the energy to actually cool down your vats as well. Now, this process is sometimes referred to as cold maceration or cold soaking. So cold maceration and cold soaking are a type of pre-fermentation maceration. Now we have an aim or a purpose here, and that is to extract 
color, and also flavor compounds. Many Burgundian winemakers for Pinot Noir swear by this process because there is no fermentation, there is no raised temperature at this point, so tannin is not being extracted. It's about color, which is often desired more so for very thin skin varieties like Pinot Noir, and then flavor, brightness of flavor typically. So it's a very useful process, certainly for thin skin varieties, but it is done across the world for a range of different grape varieties. What about the temperatures? Now, red wine fermentation temperatures usually range from about 20 degrees Celsius and up to about 32 degrees Celsius. So I'm giving you some numbers here. And of course, some of you may be watching this in the other side of the big pond in the States. So around a cooler fermentation around 20 degrees Celsius, that's about 68 degree Fahrenheit, will produce typically wines which are fruitier with lower tannins because of course the temperature is not high enough to extract too much of that tannin or color. So you'll find sort of lighter, brighter wines. And then warmer fermentations above 30 degrees Celsius, so that's above 86 degree Fahrenheit, uh, you will of course enable better extraction of tannin and color. So a bit darker color, more tannic structure, and typically make concentrated wines which are suitable for greater a aging. Now, care must be taken to ensure that temperatures don't rise too high, certainly not in excess of 35 degrees Celsius, because this may become too much of an intense environment for the yeast. It may find this too hot and it may die. So you need to bear that in mind, of course, when you are fermenting or letting certainly fermentations rise too much certainly in warmer places, of course, as well. Now, also, there is something to be said about the precise control of temperature during fermentation. Now, this can allow the winemaker to influence the amounts of color, flavor, and tannin that are extracted. For example, although tannins become more soluble as alcohol levels rise, a winemaker can reduce their extraction by lowering the temperature towards the end of fermentation. So we know as winemakers that as the fermentation goes on, there's more extraction that happens. So typically, winemakers will reduce the amount of maceration. So they might reduce their pump overs. They might reduce their punch downs. Uh, and they certainly might look at the temperature levels as well and reduce, reduce that towards the end of fermentation as well. Okay, well, that brings me to a conclusion of this first video. Please do join me for the next one looking at cap management techniques. Now, I've just mentioned a few of those pump overs, punch downs, rotary fermenters. These kind of things will be discussed in part two, talking about the cap. And I will go through a definition of the cap as well. But this part, part two and part three, will only be available to those of you that subscribe to my e-learning portal. You can find that by searching for Jimmy Smith e-learning or by looking at winewithjimmy.com. You'll get all the information you need there. If you do have any comments or questions, please do get in touch by commenting on this video below. And of course, if you do find yourself in the UK, come and say hello for a class a glass or a bottle. I've been Jimmy Smith. Ciao for now. Goodbye.